Irish politician Ben Gilroy has put out a viral video which showed that only 100 people died in Ireland of COVID who didn't have underlying conditions, a small number considering that the total who died was 1,777. But there's more in that report than Ben brought out in his brief video. Let's just take a look. Here it is, 1,777 who died in all and with underlying clinical conditions, 1,677. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out there's only 100 people who didn't have clinical conditions. But take a look at the number of cases hospitalized, which is shown just below that. 758 people were hospitalized out of the 1,777 who died. That means over a thousand people died without ever even being admitted to hospital. How could that be? Why wouldn't you admit people to hospital to save them? Isn't this what we're told? Respirators, ventilators, intensive care, etc. Well, the answer in part is certainly a little obvious because there was no point. Because those persons were of an age that it was, there was no point. They had fatally contracted COVID and indeed perhaps any disease of significance would cause them to die. So if we take a look at the figures there, you can see that uh, the median age was 84. So uh, that would in part then perhaps explain why only 758 were transferred to hospital and over a thousand died, presumably in nursing homes in many cases. But it also raises a concern which should be addressed. Is that the only reason why they weren't transferred to hospital? Should more have been? And were some not transferred because of concerns about creating further infection in a hospital environment if they did so, considering the uh, potential for saving the person's life? They, all these are valid considerations. I'm just explaining or trying to explain why far less than half were transferred to hospital. There's an even more surprising figure. Let me show you that also. The number of cases admitted to ICU, and I've highlighted it there for you in red, is 94. So out of the 758 people who were in hospital, only 94 were transferred to ICU. Again, we're told ICU, ventilators, this is what we do to save people. Why such a small number transferred to ICU then? Looking around for answers, we're forced to reach somewhat the same conclusions, aren't we? That the 758 people who died were perhaps of such an age that transferring them to ICU wasn't warranted. And that would be the normal procedure in even non-COVID situations with people whom medical practitioners feel in all conscience it's not worth putting the person through the trauma of ICU because there will be no, no point in so doing. So now let's come back to our first figure, the one that Ben Gilroy has highlighted to the nation of only 100 people without underlying conditions who died and compare that to the number of cases admitted to ICU 94 am I exaggerating if I say that we can presume that those who had the most survivable situation the most likelihood of being able to survive this disease who may have needed ICU admission were precisely those people without the underlying conditions the 100 It'd be an exaggeration to say, yeah, well, pretty much all that 100 went into ICU, the ones who didn't have underlying conditions. Which means, in that simplistic analysis, that nobody else other than those people without the underlying conditions ended up in ICU, in general. This is an entirely different picture of this disease than the one which has been painted to us. And you could, in a certain sense, say that the 94 who were admitted to ICU, who lost their lives, were the core of the preventable death phenomenon, which was COVID-19. 
which now seems to be in abeyance. So those some brief figures there, folks. I just shared them with you for your comment, for your analysis, for uh, whatever angle you might put on this also. But one thing I would like to leave you with as well is the median age there of 84, which is shown. And that means that median, half the people, therefore, who died were over 84, and half of those who died were under 84, with the uh, average age being 82. So this has been and continues to be the story of nursing homes, the story of the very vulnerable in terms of looking at the actions of the state. And I see no interest in the state in looking at these issues. It doesn't surprise me. For years I've worked for the truth on mother and baby homes and I've found the state just as uninterested and even where it investigates, it investigates in a limited way. I'd like some more answers. I hope you would like some more answers to what we see in these figures. And I hope we can work together to try and get those answers for ourselves, but specifically for those who have been left bereaved. Check out a Facebook page if you would, and it's Justice for the Vulnerable. And uh, there you'll find a link to an online petition where you can petition the Irish government to open an inquiry on these issues. I hope you will. I think that's uh, what they deserve, and I think we all deserve truth. It's great to see that we can shed a light on what's really been going on. 100 only, without COVID, that tells us about what's been going on. 94 in ICU, that opens up a whole host of more questions. Okay, that's it for this edition. I'll be back with more soon. This has been Finton Dunn for informedconsent.ie. And I do hope you'll join me for that. Thank you very much.